If all good dogs go to heaven, where do cats go? There are two cities in the world that share urban space with big cats. Mumbai in India has their leopards, and Los Angeles has mountain lions. Los Angeles recently lost its beloved P-22. Puma-22 lived in the greater backyard emirates of Griffith Park. I remember when he had a koala from the zoo for dinner. I think it surprised everyone to learn that a mountain lion had breached the zoo. I'm glad he didn't meet an untimely fate then. The scientists and biologists involved seem to understand the unique nature of this apex predator and his urban predicament. You simply don't punish a cat for being a cat. I have news for those well-meaning people who don't want their cats catting. Bells on collars don't work. And declawing is like having your fingers amputated at the first knuckle beneath the fingernail. It's senseless and cruel. Anything with moita mittens is gonna moita. It's the nature of an obligate carnivore. They eat stuff. Other animals stuff. Meat. Sorry, vegans. Your food politics fall flat when it comes to this aspect of nature, specifically cats. Humans are omnivores. We evolved to eat all sorts of stuff, including other animals, and in some cases, other people. I hate food politics. The problem is not who or what we eat. The problem is the industrialization and distribution of agriculture. On social media, there's a joke about vegans. How do you know someone is a vegan? Oh, they'll tell you. Years ago, a social media friend put out a call for art. They wanted to see photos of what was on our easels. I took the bait and sent them an image of what I was painting and an image of what inspired it. It was a dead bird delivered to my outdoor workspace by one of my cats. The carcass had been there long enough that ants had eaten a perfect little circle into it. The response I got was absurd. I find the image you submitted to be offensive and will be rejecting it. You should know that I'm vegan and an animal rights activist. Um, what? I honestly don't think cats give a rat's behind about anyone's activism. To be honest, I don't have a problem with vegetarians. I have a problem with hypocrisy. You don't get to be holier than thou and feed a cat. Let's not forget where pet food comes from. Actually, go ahead and forget. If your cats are like mine, they'll remind you about who and what they eat, whether you like it or not. My meatlessness lasted 22 years. My becoming vegetarian wasn't political, wasn't spiritual either. Although I tried to convince myself that this was the reasoning for becoming vegetarian, I think it was more of a rebellious fashion statement based on my own fear of death. There, I said it. In 2009, I was seeing an endocrinologist for perimenopausal issues when he suggested returning to animal protein, meat. It would be better for my thyroid condition. I conceded, remembering that the one thing I missed eating all those years was fish. I could do fish, right? Growing up, fish was a treat. I preferred fish to anything else. I loved fish Fridays at the school cafeteria. Loved it more than pizza days. Cafeteria pizza was just weird. It was more like a thick square of bread with a layer of sauce and a light layer of some nondescript white cheese. Fatter than cornbread thick. Just weird. My first attempt at eating animal protein would be a fish and chips holiday dinner. I didn't think about how I might need to ease back into eating fish, let alone other meat. I took two or three bites and freaked out. Suffice it to say, the cats ate well that night. Initially, P-22 was going to be immortalized as an exhibit at the Natural History Museum. Local indigenous groups called this colonialist science and asked that the big cat be returned to his home in Griffith Park. After all, mountain lions are considered relatives of indigenous peoples. The cynic in me wonders if P-22 had not reached celebrity status, would this have happened? What about the other pumas that have been lost crossing freeways or hunted by llama ranchers in fucking Malibu? 
Did they get returned to their respective homes? Or were they all topsied and cremated without ceremony? Is science really a colonialist construct? Why can't we have both science and culture? Can't we have more than one approach to understanding the nature around us and within us? We are not good stewards. Especially those of us who live comfortable bourgeois lives in urban centers. We have sold our place in nature. We buy without understanding that our voracious appetite for the latest greatest food items at Trader Joe's is probably causing ecological and cultural consequences elsewhere. But who cares as long as there's quinoa and avocados year-round? Nature is expected to adapt to us and our rules. And nature does adapt. Society continues to consume land with development and unnatural encroachments. Success is always equated with taking more, consequences be damned. Super glue and tomato soup PR stunts in arts institutions do nothing for the cause of nature, and it certainly does not prompt meaningful and necessary conversation leading to right action. We were kicked out of the garden for a reason. We tricked ourselves with hunger for knowledge. Once given the fruit, we have remained willfully ignorant, staunchly and wrongly ideological when it comes to our place in nature. My own hypocritical role in this is not to be overlooked. I am a consumer. I drive a 30-year-old four-wheel drive SUV. I have a smarty pants phone, a tablet, and a desktop computer. I opt for convenience like the rest of us. True to my nature, I have adapted to this way of life. If there is such a thing, my spirit animal is a pampered domestic cat. I don't know all the answers. I don't know much, really. I'm old and tired, with a brain that is also old and tired. One thing is for sure, it's really long past time to return to the garden and tend to it. The late, great Ichabod K. Smith died close to Halloween in 2010. He had kidney disease. He was 15. My beloved Castor, now 14, has kidney disease. P22 had kidney disease. He was 12. My vet says one way to look at kidney disease is that cats are living longer and therefore contending with the afflictions of old age. If domestic cats lived in the wild, they would only reach five to seven years. The average age of a puma or mountain lion is 10 to 13 years. Most never get that old thanks to human encroachment. Icky was 15 when he died at the foot of Kukui's cage. I wrapped him in a shroud of beautiful tie-dyed cloth from India. Jeff dug a hole in the backyard emirates for him. Castor, Pollux, Chicken, and Kukui all gathered around the hole as I laid him in. They came on their own accord. The prince was gone. Good night, sweet prince. To this day, Kukui asks, Where's Icky? I always answer the same. You know where he is. <laughs>